but it's Wednesday. Yes. You made it halfway through right. Focus 2020 VBS. And we are so excited and we're so proud of all that you are learning. Today, you have Miss Karen and Mr. Joseph back with you if you're in elementary school. And Miss Jen Simmons is back if you were in preschool. And I know you are super excited to have them back with you today. We want to take a minute and remind you of your memory verse. Yes, I'm Pastor Hayden again. I'm good to... Good to have you back. We're excited about the memory verse. I hope you've been learning it and trying to, to get it in your head because it's something you should take with you always. It's from your Bible, uh, book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 2. It says, let us keep looking to Jesus. He's the one who started this journey of faith, and he is the one who completes the journey of faith. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's take a moment and pray. We wanted you to get right to your activities today. So bow your heads for me. Lord God, it is Wednesday, and we know that you are working so hard through the kids and that the Holy Spirit is moving and that they are learning so much. Be with the teachers today and be with the parents today as they work with their kids on these activities. Help them to have a great time and to stay safe throughout the day so they can come back tomorrow to see what we have for Thursday. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great day. I'm Kelly, and we've had so much fun together already. I'm so glad that you're back for more. I love discovering new things, like the fact that your favorite TV show right now is... That's mine too! Or that the very best flavor of ice cream is... I love Rocky Road. Or that people should definitely be able to wear flip-flops all year long. <laughs> so comfy, so easy. It's amazing what you can find out when you really focus on something. When you take a closer look, you see things you never noticed before. You might even learn something about what you can't see because of the things you can see. Our relationship with God is kind of like that. We can discover more about him as we focus on him every day. We'll discover another great way to focus on God today. But first, it's time for a game. This one's called Guess Em All. First, you'll need a piece of paper and a pen. Also, ask a parent or older brother or sister or whoever you live with and see if they wanna help you play the game too. You can pause this video while you grab that pen and paper and see who else wants to help you play. Ready, go! You're about to see a series of random images, 30 of them to be exact. When the video is over, you'll try to remember as many of those random items as you can. The answers don't have to be in order. Just write down as many of them as you can remember on your piece of paper. But here's the most important part. You can't write anything while the video is playing, okay? You have to wait until after it ends. All right, let's do this. Remember, don't write anything down. Just watch the video and try to remember everything you see. Three, two, one, go! Now, let's see how many you can remember. You've got 30 seconds to write down your answers. Ready, go!
see how you did. We'll show the answers and you can pause the screen and see how many you got right. If you have any of the items written on your paper, put the check mark next to them. Then add up your total. All right, here we go. Did you have some of those answers written down on your paper? How many? Oh, nice job! <laughs> I know that took some serious focus. Now, let's focus on our amazing God by singing and worshiping Him together. Get up on your feet, everybody. your mouth has to do to create sound. Any sound, every sound, sounds like and sounds like and even like None of those sounds happened by accident. We were blessed with amazing verbal and linguistic abilities. So blessed, in fact, that even now, as I'm whispering, you can understand me because I'm articulating every word very clearly. <laughs> Humans have amazing skills, right? We can lift up giant boulders. 
and we can screw in the tiniest screw into very complicated machinery. How did we get to the point where we could do that? Well, some scientists think it happened when we as a species developed speech. Just look at everything going on while I'm talking. Our mouths do such a complicated dance in order to talk that all of our physical skills got better, more precise. Now, if you ever think, Come on, talking, I don't see what the big deal is. <laughs> well then try talking without your tongue. Oh, this is incredibly difficult. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, just as important are your lips and teeth. P, D, T, B. Just imagine all of the words you wouldn't be able to say if you couldn't manipulate your mouth this way. What was that? I, I couldn't understand you. <laughs> but it's not just the stuff in our mouth that affects sound, it's also the nasal cavity. See, right now, you can probably tell I'm losing a lot of the details at my voice, because we often think that sound only comes out of our mouths, but it also comes out of our nose, too. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. No, I did. What was that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to know how much money it would be to mail a package to Indiana? Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Very good point, Wilson. The point Wilson is trying to make, none of this would even matter without our vocal cords. The sound comes up out of our throat until it reaches our head, all the way to the top, until it finally comes out of our mouths. Oh, that's so much better. It's changed by our tongue. What do I do now? Same thing we do every day, Samantha. Listen to Kyle talk forever. <laughs> until it finally comes out of our nose. Ah, Ooh. <laughs> back to normal. <laughs> this still is uncomfortable. You know you can stick your tongue back into your mouth now, right? Ah, that's better. Yeah. Although talking with my tongue out made my throat really dry, I could use some water. What are you talking about? <laughs> Wait a second. Do I have the power to make that noise every time I tell a dad joke? Uh, we'll, we'll see in a little bit. We'll be right back after this. <gasps> wait, 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 wait. What type of cheese is not yours? <clears throat> Nacho cheese! <laughs> this is blowing my mind. Uh, 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 what time do ducks wake up in the morning? <laughs> At the quack of dawn. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> no, 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 don't go, don't go, don't go. No. I've literally got millions. Seeing it, uh, maybe if you turn it sideways. Uh, nope. Oh, hey, Kellen here, and I'm looking at an optical illusion. If you look at it a certain way, you're supposed to see a 3D picture pop out. Here, see if you can see it. Do you see it? Hey, it's a dragon eating a donut. No, it's a baseball player using a rubber chicken as a bat. It's just a bird, a normal bird. Yeah, I still don't see it. Okay, but I also have this one here. This is cool. So the lines look like they're moving, but they're actually not. It's playing a trick on our eyes. 
the way these lines are put together gives them the illusion of movement. Crazy, right? We've been talking this week about taking a closer look at what's around us. When we're taking a closer look, maybe we can see things that we hadn't seen before, or maybe we can see things in a new way. Our Bible story today is asking us to take a closer look into who Jesus is. We're in the book of Matthew, and when we pick up the story in chapter 16, Jesus has already been on the scene for a while, and people are wondering, who is this guy? He's doing miracles. He's feeding the poor. He's hanging out with all kinds of people the rest of the world look down on. He's teaching new things. Who is he exactly? So we read that Jesus was walking down the road and he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? His disciples turned to each other and they didn't answer for themselves. They told him what other people were saying. They told him, some say you're John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. Others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. That's what the disciples said. But let's say you asked people today, who is Jesus? You would probably hear a lot of different things too. Maybe some would say, he's a great teacher. Some people might say he's a great rabbi or preacher. People might see how he healed the sick and call him a doctor. People might say Jesus is love that he is the light of the world, that he is a shepherd for his people. People have a lot of different thoughts about who Jesus is. But let's go back to the story now. His disciples had given him answers of what others were saying, but then Jesus asked his disciples, but what about you? Who do you say I am? I wonder if the disciples were scared here. They were put on the spot. Maybe they didn't know exactly who Jesus is, or maybe they didn't wanna say what they thought. But here, Jesus was asking them point blank, who do you say that I am? They had to answer for themselves. But then, after a moment, Peter spoke up. He too might have been scared or unsure, but he said this, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Now, Jesus is many of those things we listed, but Peter recognized he is so much more. And here's the thing, you're invited to recognize the same thing. If you see that Jesus is the Messiah and ask him to be a part of your life, he can and he will continue to change your life forever. Now, Jesus went on to tell Peter that his answer was revealed to him by God and that Peter will be the rock that he would build the church on. Now, here's the thing about Peter. He wasn't perfect. He said some pretty wild things and made some pretty big mistakes but he was honest and he wasn't scared to say what he was thinking or ask questions of Jesus or other people. Peter took a closer look at Jesus. He saw the way Jesus loved, the way he taught, the way he changed the world. Peter realized Jesus is the Messiah. We can learn a lot by being honest and asking questions just like Peter. You can talk with people about what you believe, especially talk with people in your life that you can trust like your parents or your small group leaders. The more you talk about what you believe, the more you can learn from others and the more others can learn from you. That's it for today. I'll see you guys soon as we continue to take a closer look. So folks, why did the mushroom like to party all the time? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, folks, I just flew into town this morning, and boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> no. You get it? You get it? Because I'm implying that I flew here using my arms, which would be very tiring indeed, because I'm, I'm not a bird. We're not a flying species. Great. <laughs> Jokes, right? They're great. One of our greatest uses of our gift of speech. Why can't you tell a pig a secret? Because they always squeal. <laughs> that was the best one. <laughs> wait, wait, I want to try something. I want to try something. Hey, hold on, hold on. Fine. 
Think about how incredible all of the gifts of speech are. You've got jokes, you've got singing. Figaro, 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 Figaro. To be or not to be. <gasps> Let's try to be! Oh, um, psst. That's not the line. Yeah, I know, but mine's way better anyway. I mean, Shakespeare's great and all, but what's he even done lately? <sighs> You even have fun stuff that's not based around words, like beatboxing. That was incredible. There's no way any of us could learn how to do that. Wow, that was pretty <laughs> amazing. Well, have you ever had an idea that was like really hard to communicate? Like you knew what you wanted to say, but you didn't know exactly how to say it. Well, our voices and the sounds that our mouth makes or make up all of the words in our dictionary. And I mean, that's just English. There are languages all over the world, like uh, Chinese, for instance. It's not just what you say, but how you say it that changes the whole meaning of your words. Well, that's true for English too, Kyle. How so? Huh? There's a big difference between thanks a lot, Kyle, and Thanks a lot, Kyle. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, how do you like to use your voice? Are there any favorite things that you like to talk about? Oh, um, mine is how much I love my friends Aww. and how lucky I am to be on this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like correcting people. And boy, does it feel good. All right, uh, well, what else do you like to use your voice for? Um, are, are there any ways you like to use your voice that you really love? Oh, yes! I love to sing. I love that. <laughs> I don't know how to do it yet, but I'm determined to learn how to beatbox. <gasps> I'm so close. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to get there. I'm yeah, gonna, I heard I'm gonna keep practicing somewhere in there. Me too, me too. Yeah. Uh -huh. However, you like to use your voice. Remember, uh, you were created to use it, so use it to the fullest. Sing. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> Tell jokes. <laughs> Learn how to beatbox. No matter how you want to use your voice, remember, it's a gift, and we're all way better off for hearing it. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on A Closer Look. <laughs> oh, man, learning how to beatbox is exhausting. Oh, yeah, you look pretty beat. <laughs> oh, I did it! Did you hear that? I did it! I did it! Oh, yes! Awesome. Yes! <laughs> This is my faith, this is my focus All of my days, I know where my hope is I live it loud, I shout the chorus Because I know, oh, you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will and keep on looking, looking, looking to you For where I'm going, knowing you go there too I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you I'll fix my eyes on you This is my 
face This is my focus All of my days I know where my hope is I live it like I shot the chorus Because I know Oh, you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see of things that we wonder about God. Things that make us go <laughs> That's why it's great to talk things through with someone you trust. Maybe you've heard about Jesus before, and you've heard that he died on the cross for our sins. Maybe you know that Jesus rose from the dead, and that if we put our faith in him, we have the promise of eternal life. If that sounds like a big deal, it is! Have you ever really talked about that with someone before? Have you ever really asked questions about that before? Have you ever thought about whether you believe it for yourself? Remember, you can talk with others about what you believe. You can focus on God by talking about him with other people. Here's a question you can talk about together. What is God doing in your life right now? That's a good one, huh? <laughs> I bet he's doing some things in your life that the people around you don't even know about. And I bet they've got some stories to share too. Talk it over with whoever is there with you right now in your house or apartment, and I'll see you next time, okay? Hello, how are you all doing today? What? How are you doing today? Can you speak up a little louder? I just can't hear you. Oh, okay, you don't need to yell. So, how was the lesson that you learned? Can anyone tell me what you learned about Peter and Jesus? If you can't remember, I want you guys to go ahead and get your little activity box for day three, and I want you to pull out the activities. We are gonna play a little matching game, all right? So you are either gonna have the cards, or you're gonna have two sheets of identical papers that you have to cut out all of the cards, okay? One or the other. And I'm sure everyone has played matching at some point along so you lead at least two people all right i want you to find a surface like a table and i want you to shuffle the decks and i want you to lay them out and i want you to play a quick game of matching until all the all the um cards are done and see who wants and i want you to return back to me probably about five or ten minutes how was the game who won did you have a good time? 
Did you figure out with focusing, it was kind of hard at times, but I bet you eventually you focused and remembered where the cards were. Can anyone tell me what was so special about these cards? What did they have to do with Jesus? And I'm sure you probably figured out like they were some of the things of what they called Jesus or what they thought of Jesus back in his time and what we think about Jesus in this time, right? Like we had John the Baptist, because that's what a lot of people thought that Jesus was. They didn't think he was what Peter called him to be. And they thought he was like Elijah, which was like a prophet, right? But today we consider him to be our teacher, to teach us about the Bible, as well as a healer, right? Because he heals. And my favorite is probably a shepherd because we are his sheep, right? So that was really awesome because that's what Jesus asked Peter, right? He wanted to know, what do people call me? And what did Peter say? Because I don't think what Peter said was in this card. We were missing what Peter said in the card. Does anyone have an idea of what that is? I think someone might have said, Peter said, you are the Messiah. Yes, that is what Peter said. He said, you are the son of the living God in Matthew 16, 15 through 16, right? Peter recognized Jesus as God's son, right? Peter also recognized Jesus as the one who was sent by God to what? Rescue us all, right? And when Jesus asked Peter what he believed, Peter answered him. And I want you to be just like Peter, all right? I want, we all can start talking with others about what we believe, what we believe about God, and tell others, talk to them. All right, so think about that. Don't be afraid. That's the bottom line, right? We can talk to with others about what we believe. So the next thing we are going to do is I want you to get the one piece of paper, whether you have it uh, in the activity box or from home, and get some pencils and markers or whatever. We're gonna do a little activity. We're gonna first take this piece of paper and we're gonna fold it in half, all right? And on one side of the paper, I want you to think about or brainstorm people that you can talk about God or who you go to about if you have questions about God or the Bible. You know, I want you to think about it. It could be your parents. It could be Pastor Hayden. It could be Miss Jen. It could be your Sunday school. It could be a VBS teacher. It could be anyone that you feel that you can go and ask a question about God or the Bible, all right? And I'm gonna give you about mm, five minutes or so and think about it and then come back. All right, I would think that you would have different answers than me because I'm a lot older than you guys. So I want you to share with me what you put down or share with each other what you put down and what you thought you would share or who needs you who do you need to talk to about God right I put Pastor Hayden all right you can always talk about there's so many knowledgeable people at church but you know one thing I like to do I like to sit down and pray and talk to God or get my Bible out and read it right so the next thing I want you to do on the other side of the paper I want you to do two speech bubbles all right so who knows what a speech bubble is? And, and if you don't know what a speech bubble is, who's seen a comic book or seen little cartoons where they do little speech bubbles and they, they do little things where they write down where you see it on a book and someone's talking and it would be either what they're thinking or teaching, all right? So I want you to do two speech bubbles on the other side of the paper, all right? And I want you to just draw it out, all right? And then I want you to write in there the two speech bubbles of what question you would have about God or Jesus or the Bible, or maybe something that you want to talk to or share with somebody about the Bible. All right, 
so on the back side where I have the speech bubbles, I did two different ones, all right? The first one was a question I would have to someone that I feel maybe, um, I, that I don't know is maybe someone I just met or maybe I know that they don't really um, go to church or anything. So I wanted like to share them with the news about Jesus. So I put in there, do you know about Jesus with a question mark? Because it's a question, all right? And this one, I kind of did like with explanation and emphasis, you know, I put in there and this would be someone that maybe I feel is having a bad day. All right. And maybe you just want to cheer them up. You know what I put in there? I put in there. God loves you because I want to do it with excitement because God does love you. He loves you. He loves me. He loves everyone. And that is why he gave us Jesus right? Because he did it for all of us. All right. So I want you to share with these about what you want to do and who you can talk about with Jesus and what you believe, right? So maybe you are hearing about Jesus for the first time, or maybe you have lots of questions. All right. Or maybe you've been going to church and you've been doing a lot of Sunday school and vacation Bible school, and you know, Jesus is your best Friend, and you talk to him all the time and you know life is better with Jesus and you want to share everything you know about him. So that is awesome. But remember, Jesus wants us to be like Peter and he wants us to what? Talk to others about what we believe. So I want you to make sure you go and share what you believe about Jesus in the Bible. All right. So it's time for us to do our prayer and have our reflection down. So I want you to go ahead and grab your index cards that were in your activity box that you've been using for day one and day two. All right. And on the top of it, I want you to write, I believe, right? So I want you to write down, I believe, and I want you to take a few minutes and think about what it is that you believe about um, Jesus or the Bible or God. All right. All right, so what did you write down? Did you have trouble finding out what you wanna put down for what you believe or not? Right now, what I put down on my card, I do believe a lot about Jesus, but right now what I believe and what I'm concentrating on every day and trying to remember is Jesus is a healer because we need to remember in a time like this that yes, Jesus does heal and we need to know that he is, um, he's thinking of us and he knows what's best. All right, so maybe you have a different question or maybe you, you know, the more you read and the more you learn about Jesus, the more you'll be able to talk and share what Jesus, uh, about Jesus and what you've learned. All right, so let us go ahead and bow our heads and do our prayer. All right, say, God, we thank you so much for this story about Jesus. Jesus encouraged Peter to talk about what he believed and you may want us to talk about you too. We know that when we talk with others, we can get a closer look and discover who you are and all that Jesus did for us. We know, like Peter, we are not perfect, Lord. There are times that we don't wanna do what you want us to do. There are times that we don't listen to you, Lord. And for that, we are sorry. Lord, we are so thankful you sent us Jesus to be our rescuer. And when we believe in Jesus, we can be with you now and forever. Lord, thank you for loving us so much. And we want to be with us, that you want to be with us. Amen. Hi kids, welcome to day three of Focus VBS 2020. Today, we're gonna be going on the pure creative side. What you need is some plates, a few uh, empty rolls or other cylindrical objects, and just make a little course for your marbles or beads or whatever you have off with you that can roll. And then, after you've gotten your crazy adventure with whatever limited pieces you have, this is what I had, so it isn't as crazy as you could make it. You just take some of your pebbles and see if they make it.
which they did. The reason for this little winding road we have is to show that life isn't always easy. You may not know where you're going. It may be dark and scary. But in those times, that's when we trust in God the most. And when we know people else going through those times, we can point them to the one thing that keeps us secure in this winding, dark road we walk on. Jesus. God. So, while we may not know what's going on or where we're going, as long as we follow the dark, windy road God set before us, we're going to make it to the bottom. Uh, so, with that comfort, we should tell everyone that same comfort. Because we all know everyone's scared right now. And they could use a little comfort. We can talk to others about what you believe. This has been Focus BBS 2020 and Mount Zion United Methodist Church in Logan, Maryland. I hope to see you tomorrow, and God bless. Can you believe it's already day three? We're already halfway through the week, and you are doing it. We're so proud of everything you've done so far. Keep up the great work and keep practicing that memory verse. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for day four. Bye-bye.